What's up everybody? Now listen, I know most of you know that most top level racing drivers, whether it's Formula One or Formula E or anything else for that matter, have their own seats to put in the car, bespoke, moulded to their own body shape. Why? How does that happen? I'm delighted to say that today I've got exclusive access to Jaguar Racing's Formula E team and their driver, James Collado, to show you exactly how that happens. And even better than that, the guy that's making the seat is my old mate from McLaren. Come and have a look. His name's Vaughan Cartwright and he's a friend of mine because we used to work together at McLaren both as mechanics back in the early 2000s. I've moved on to do what I do, he went off to start making seats for racing drivers. So Vaughan was a uh, mechanic at McLaren alongside me back in the early 2000s, he also yes. worked at VAR. Yep. Uh, and since then has left, uh, like me, and gone on to do other things. So now what you're doing is you've built yourself a business making race seats for drivers in all sorts of categories from Formula One, yep. Formula E, which is what we're doing here today. What else? Uh, DTM, yep. uh, F2, F3, uh, World Endurance Championship, yep. uh, touring cars, supercars, GT, you name it, we'll, we'll mold a seat for it. That's what I want to do today, is yep. just lift him up, just yep. push yeah. his bum back a little bit, get him a little bit higher so he's a bit more like that. This is a Formula E FIA shell, right? Correct, yep. So yep. the FIA uh, produce a shell for every single chassis, because all the chassis are the same in this particular championship. And this has these on, which are for the, uh, the safe, the stewards and the marshals to be able to lift the driver out. Correct, yep. So yep. everyone's got this bit. Yep. What is it you then do to make something bespoke for a driver? Okay, we have a bag uh, that's uh, tailored to the dimensions uh, for the safety cell, filled with uh, micro polystyrene um, uh, beads, so that we can systematically and methodically go through the process of vacuum forming the driver into the correct position. So during the process, uh, the driver can, we can release the vacuum, the driver can move, we can move material to improve the lumbar support or, or take material away if they're too high. So you're literally shifting the beads around his correct. body to give him support. To it, it, exactly, exactly. I mean, I'll obviously build up the material here yeah. um, to give you that lateral support in the ribs. Just a bit more up here with like you see here. So 100% we need driver input because yeah. it's for them, they've got to take ownership of it. We focus a lot on what they tell us about you know, if they're feeling any pain or, or not having enough support in the shoulders or lower back. Um, and obviously whilst we're moulding the seat, at the same time we've got to be very conscious of the regulations. Uh, there's, uh, as you know, there's uh, a height restriction uh, that the drivers have to be within. Um, and that's, and but that's from the top of their crash helmet to a, an invisible line between the roll hoop correct. and the rollover point at the correct. front of the chassis. Yeah, so whilst we're going through the process in the car, uh, we, we take into account that we've got to be uh, mindful of those restrictions and, yeah. and regulations. Um, addition, additionally to that, uh, things like pedal adjustment, uh, we've got to make sure that the driver is got the correct leg angle so they can apply the brake pressure comfortably, yeah. operate the throttle correctly. Uh, in the Formula E car, uh, because of now with the halo, uh, with the additional safety of the halo, uh, there is a regulation that the steering wheel has to be in a fixed position. Okay. But historically, we could move the steering column forward or rearward to help uh, with driver positioning. Now, uh, with a fixed position, that sort of um, compromises us a little bit, especially with bigger drivers, yeah. uh, to try and get them into a, into a one-make formula car. Well I mean you and I have both been through the seat fitting process as mechanics back yeah. in the day didn't we and it was back then I remember you know this being a long process but it was pretty much a bag and some two-part foam that you'd pour this stuff in down the back of a driver's back as he sat in the car and this great big bin bag would start expanding yeah, it? and yeah, occasionally yeah, yeah, it'd spill over yeah, the top yeah, yeah. You know, down the driver's neck and uh, it's not quite like that anymore. Yeah I mean it, it, you're absolutely right I think for me even before Formula One uh, in my motorsport career, it was ex exactly that process and, and it is still being used today. Uh, but I wanted to take a more, I guess, scientific approach to it. When, For me, looking at what goes into designing and building a race car, everything is, is millimetre yeah. or fractions of a millimetre perfect. And a lot of work goes into designing every aspect, whether it's a brake duct, suspension, um, wings, everything is under scrutiny. And for me, the seat is what connects the driver to the car. And if, we can make 
the driver feel part of the car and connected to the car, then their, their confidence and, and feeling what the car is doing is, is improved. So then they can offer better feedback to the yeah. team. The process today will be that you'll put the bag in, you'll fill it with the beads, you'll yep. sit the driver in there, you use a vacuum to, to seal that into a position. Yep. Once that's happened yep. and the driver's then, you've got the right position, he's comfortable, what happens then? Obviously our system works under vacuum and with, with the resin hardener curing off, they set, it sets the beads into that position. How long does that take? That takes two to three hours. I guess some people might be surprised with it. I mean, it is a whole, pretty much a whole day process, but it is that important. I mean, what, which, which bits are you looking for to get the right you know, support? I mean, obviously around your back, I guess you're looking for the right shape, but you've also got to work out what you can see. Yeah. There's various FIA measurements you've got to be beneath as well. So there's a lot to take into account, isn't there? Yeah, so this is actually the second seat I've done and it was purely because with the first seat it was a little bit too low and with Formula E had the arches over the wheels so yeah. it was really difficult at apex points to see where I was actually turning in. Yeah. Um, so this seat, the objective is just to be a little bit higher. Because you want to be, I guess, high enough to have as much viewpoint as you can but your engineer over there wants you as low as possible to keep the centre of gravity down, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, good for him, my, my bum's still on the floor, so I think that, 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 that's good. But um, yeah, like you say, it's, uh, it's important that I can actually see where I'm going properly. But obviously, you can't be too high. You need to be within the FIA uh, regulation. But um, yeah, we've just measured that up now, and it's spot on. And um, I feel really, really comfy being sat here now. So you almost fall asleep. <laughs> well, I've seen plenty of drivers actually fall asleep during yeah, the seat. It gets warm in here as well, you know, yeah, when yeah. it reacts. <laughs>
I mean, they've obviously got in-house facilities yes. to do it, but they make a carbon version of this that has these fixings already on it and it's moulded to the drive. Exactly, yeah. Obviously, yeah, we'll mould mold the F1 seats as we do today, but then the team take over from there and, and carry out their own process. So you're absolutely right. The, the inside surface that we're looking at here will mimic that of the F1 driver's uh, body shape. Um, so it, it's all encompassing in one, whereas in Formula E and Formula 2, Formula 3, there's a generic safety cell and we mould into that and so the, the seat becomes uh, an insert that gets put in each but time. One of the things that runs through all of those categories, whether it's Formula 1 or Formula 3 or anything, is you've got to keep the weight down. Again, that was something that I was very conscious of. We sort of, we had sort of two lists that, you know, of what we envisaged uh, drivers wanted, you know, comfort, support, uh, safety, all these things that were very important to a driver, equally to a team. Yeah. Uh, but engineers also want, you know, want they want something that's going to be uh, durable. They want something that weighs nothing. Yeah. And and so you're trying to tick as many boxes as we can. So hence why we we looked at obviously going down the the CAD modelling uh, route of of machining seats because that allows us to save weight, uh, make the seats even more durable. Obviously, again, meeting FIA regulations in terms of materials. Also, we can start playing around with. Um, for applications in endurance racing, we can look at cooling and things like that to uh, help with driver comfort as well, which gives us uh, more in scope. In-seat cooling. In, yep, yeah, in-seat cooling. So rather than, if you can think of a GT seat, for example. We've got one here. Yep. Yeah. Look at this. <laughs> so let's uh, shuffle that along. So this is essentially what's going to appear from your CAD modelling. This is sort of the finished article in this material, right? Yeah, this this this, uh, this material is is off is from the FIA list of materials that they recognise as, as meeting the regulations that they want to, and specifications. Uh, this is actually out of a 2014 LMP1 car. Um, so as you can see, we've sort of the reason for it being half covered is so you can see the work that goes into at that time what we were doing in terms of driver cooling that sort of moved on a lot from there but uh, what we've focused on is, is trying to create a an area that's um, allowing airflow around the driver obviously when you're strapped in to something that is molded to you with a you know with your race suit on and your underwear and helmet um, again going back to the engineering side they don't want loads of ducks coming into the car yeah, to, yeah. to help cool the driver because they had to fix the aero so we, we used the um, the air cooling that was already coming into the car and adapted that to run around the back of the seat and, and blow through the seat just to help keep the driver cool. Well, it's really interesting that the array of materials that are involved in this because that this mesh material, whatever that is, yep. it's, it's quite it's got some structure to it. It's still soft, but it allows the cooling the air the cooling air to flow right around the back like you say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean again it's it's trying to optimise everything we can. Yes, the drivers want cooling but we wanted something that would still support the driver. I mean, obviously under hard braking, you don't want a soft foam or, or mesh that's just gonna yeah. compress under under heavy braking. So it, it's all about trying to, to optimize everything. Um, the material is also fire retardant as well uh, from a safety um, aspect. It's also impregnated with an antibacterial um, agent. So sweat and other bodily fluids that might um, escape uh, don't end up re um, destroying the seat. Yeah, the mechanics will love that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, it weighs nothing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, literally, it weighs nothing. I mean, I must admit, when we're talking about the two-part foam things that we were all used to years ago, I used to think then Formula One was this high-tech, you know, industry where we're mm. at the cutting edge of everything, and yet to make a driver's seat, we're literally pouring a couple of buckets yeah, yeah. of expanding foam down the back. Yeah, yeah. It seems so low-tech, low-tech in such a high-tech world, but this now has moved on to a point where you're. You're, you're using 3D modelling, you are using innovative materials, so many different aspects that people don't realise go into it. Yeah, the, here's, here's a big piece of, of material uh, that has a very important job in the car, yeah. uh, and it was sort of almost flippantly being approached as, ah, yeah. oh, you know, you'll be fine. So, you know, we tried to bring some science to it, uh, certainly, you know, with, um, with 3D scanning and, and CAD modelling, um, understanding um, body profiling, you know, some of the testing we've done to understand you know where the loads are that drivers are experiencing trying to be more methodical in the approach but it was more like trying to get the drivers on side to say look we're here for you yeah. you know tell me what you don't like and, and we'll fix it don't yeah. don't just uh, 
be flippant about it because this is your seat and your race car. This is yeah. for you, it's not for anybody else. So Amazing. So at the end of today we'll have a, a fully finished mould. Yep. How long before you get the absolute finished product? So today will be the mould, uh, there will be a couple of days of CAD modelling done uh, to that and then uh, our report will be released back to the team and to James. Uh, they'll obviously review that themselves, it could be two or three days in terms of backwards and forwards on, on before we get final sign off. Uh, once we have sign off from them, uh, then it's 10 days uh, for us to machine and cover the seat uh, and then it'll be uh, brought back here to JAG for them to take to uh, the next event. Hopefully happy driver. Fingers crossed. So that's it, it's a long old process, but Vaughan's really happy, James is really happy, the team are really happy, and ultimately that's what this is all about, making sure that everybody who's involved in this is happy with what they need from it. The engineer wants to get the car as light as possible, he wants the driver as low as possible, the driver wants to be as, uh, as comfortable but also as high so that you can see as much as possible. And of course the whole thing has to fit nicely into the car around whatever else is in this really tight and confined cockpit. There's a lot more to it than it first meets the eye.